Um, yeah, like you said, I think Len's done a great job of giving you sort of the big picture of what Web Store is all about. And I think the challenge for us as business owners and, and people that are running businesses is to bridge the gap between a sales presentation and what's it really like to run this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, anyone out here using basic web stores currently through Channel Advisor? Okay, and so as you guys know, that product has been sunsetted. You've got a transition to make, you've got a choice to make on where to go. That's the position we were in uh, last year. Uh, we were using basic web store, and so we've made that transition. I want to talk a little bit about the details of how that went and what our specific challenges are, because all of us have different challenges. Um, so back in 2009, uh, we signed three newspapers to our services. And what we do is we go in and we digitize these old photographic archives. Okay? So these three newspapers, the Chicago Tribune, the Baltimore Sun, and the Morning Call, uh, we estimate they had about 6 million unique print photographs in their archives. And we digitize the photographs give the papers back the digital versions that they can use for whatever they want to do, and then we take the originals and we sell them to people. Uh, we sell them to collectors, to libraries, to museums, all over the world. Um, it presents some really interesting business challenges. Um, and I want to talk about what those challenges are, because we're not a Marks and Spencer. Okay, we don't have 1,200 retail locations. We don't have 75,000 employees. Um, that's not our challenge. And it probably isn't your challenge either, but you have unique challenges. So I want to talk about what some of ours were. Um, just, that's Clark Gable's Mercedes Goldwing, which I hear just sold in a Barrett Jackson auto auction. Um, but we got a picture of that. We got cool pictures of a lot of stuff. As you can imagine, from these newspapers, we get to see a lot of interesting images. And we've got everything from front page news stories, like the Hindenburg going down in 1937. Uh, that's the original photograph that was used in the article that the, the Tribune ran, or the Baltimore Sun ran. Uh, we've got well-known personalities like Marilyn Monroe and Al Capone. Um, and you'll notice the, the markings on the photographs. This is predates Photoshop by a few decades. So this is how uh, the photo editors would, would let the layout people know exactly how they wanted the photo to appear. Those are still on these old photos. Uh, one of our top grossing photographs that we sold is this picture of the 1927 New York Yankees, back to the baseball theme. Uh, World Series champions, record-setting team, had Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and a few others that were known as Murderer's Row for what they did to opposing teams pitching. But one of the interesting things about us is that we've also got a ton of obscure photographs, too, that may not be interesting to me or to you, but to somebody, these are important. Like this picture of a post office. Uh, the person that bought this photo called us, and they said, gosh, my great-grandpa worked at this post office way back when, and we've been searching and searching and searching for a photograph of this building because it no longer exists. And here we, we find your site, we find the photograph, I can't even tell you how happy we are to have found this. Um, another favorite story is the, the parrot up in the top right. The parrot's name is Old Soak, uh, belonged to the Secretary of State Henry Stimson, an old sailor. Apparently this bird, the, the researcher that bought this photograph, told us that this bird was banished from the White House for using too much profanity. <laughs> uh, apparently it learned how to curse like a sailor, and uh, the White House staff did not appreciate that too much. Uh, picture of an animal cover. No idea why anybody bought that. But they did. That was important to somebody, and, and they were able to find it and, and buy it. So, what are the challenges that we have? The number one thing is that we've got an incredibly large product catalog. Okay? Uh, right now we've got about 1.6 million SKUs in our catalog. So that's very different than most retail businesses. Most retail businesses have a smaller count of SKUs um, with depth in their inventory. <laughs> not, not us. Uh, we, everything that we have is quantity of one. Okay? Everything is unique. 
And if you've never seen a million of something, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, and number two, we have a very dynamic product catalog. What do I mean by that? We are adding, this is an ongoing process for us, we are adding between five and 10,000 new SKUs every week to our catalog. At the same time, as we sell them, because everything is quantity one, we're also removing to the 3,000 SKUs every week. So we've got a lot of change happening within our catalog. We need something that can keep up with that. Multi-channel exposure, definitely a big deal. That's why we're channel advisor customers, right? We're all about multi-channel. And that is, that is a big deal for us, but we've got some real challenges because all of our inventory is unique. How do you get multi-channel exposure for unique items? Order management, it's all about efficiency. Our website solution had to plug into our existing workflows in such a manner that it wasn't gonna create, we didn't have to recreate the wheel. Design customization. We've talked about, we've all got very different businesses in here, whether it's golf clubs or beads or uh, auto parts or old photographs. Each of us has unique uh, customers and, and unique ways that we want to try to merchandise our products and connect with our customers. And a lot of how we do that is through our design. So to be able to customize that is important. SEO tools, the, the magic, <laughs> the black box, everyone wants to be on page one of Google, right? So we want something that's gonna at least help us. And then of course, we want a good customer facing features that it's easy to use our website, it's engaging, right? We want our, we want our website to present a good shopping experience and, and have positive interactions. So how did Amazon Web Store handle these challenges? Well. It doesn't probably need to be said that Amazon and scalability go hand in hand. Uh, we didn't have too many concerns about whether Amazon could scale to meet our traffic demands, or you know, I mean, Marks and Spencer was a great example of that. Uh, interestingly enough, we even caused them to hesitate a little bit when we told them that we had over a million SKUs, because that's such an interesting and odd requirement. They said, well, I think that'll not be a problem. And, and it has It's worked beautifully. Um, there have been no issues whatsoever with them handling the size of our catalog. Uh, you, can, you can use multi-level categories. Uh, you know, that's maybe not real sexy, but it's really helpful when you've got that many things to categorize. You can assign products to multiple categories. I was really amazed as I was looking at different shopping cart solutions and website solutions, how few of them offered this, being able to assign products to multiple categories. Either it didn't exist, or it was a premium feature that you had to pay extra for. It took me by surprise. Uh, site searching is hugely important to us. 80 to 90% of our customers that interact with our website use the site search as their primary way of finding what they're looking for. That might be different for you. For us, search is huge. Uh, and so, we needed to know what information was going to get indexed and would that index perform very well, and it has. Search filters. <clears throat> Man, this is another one of those features that is surprisingly hard to find with a website solution. And what I'm talking about is, you'll see the orange box there on the left of the screen. If you go to our website today and you search for Yankees, okay, you'll come up with about 1,500 plus results. And so it's really helpful for our customers to be able to take those results and filter those down to get a little bit closer to what they're looking for so you're not having to page through 1,500 items. And so you can, you can filter that by things like price or size or category. Uh, you can customize what you refine these by. So we've got what source archive that they come from. Uh, and then actually as Channel Advisor rolls out sort of their next uh, level of, of integration between Web Store and Channel Advisor, you're going to have a lot more control over what fields you can use for these filters. You can do whatever you want. There's, it's just a custom field. You call what you want and you give it whatever value you want, and that can become a search filter. Very, very helpful. Okay, I talked about our dynamic product catalog. <clears throat> 
I'm going to hit this over and over again. It, the integration with Channel Advisor is already done. And so um, there was no extra work for us to do, which was nice because probably like most of you, you know, I'm the business owner, I'm the director of operations, I'm the IT department, I'm the help desk. You know, I wear a lot of hats. And so if we've got to build something new, uh, I don't have time to do that. The integration's already done. That means that using the tools we're already used to using within Channel Advisor, we can add, update, remove inventory very, very easily. What we've seen is as many SKUs as we're adding and removing, uh, new products show up in our web store within about an hour. Um, and quantity and price updates within about 10 to 15 minutes on average. And so it's, it's very responsible, it's very reliable, and it's worked very well. Multi-channel exposure. Again, for us, because we have quantity one, um, we have some issues there. It's not easy to do. And with basic web store, what that meant is if we wanted to take something and put it, say, on eBay, uh, we would have to actually remove it from the web store to send it to eBay, which meant, and we've got a half a million listings on eBay at any given time. Okay, so we're taking huge chunks of, of inventory out of our store so that we can put it onto, what, onto eBay. Well, now all the search traffic that we've tried so hard to direct to our website, those products aren't there anymore because we've had to remove them. And so we were, we were dying. <laughs> we were ending up with a lot of dead links. Uh, the search indexing couldn't keep up with that dynamic uh, removal mm -hmm. and, and adding stuff back in. And so people would search for something on our site that should be there, nothing would come up. Um, that has been solved. Channel Advisor's inventory juggle is a godsend for us. And if you haven't taken advantage of this yet, do it. Um, what it allows us to do is, it's fully integrated with Amazon Web Store. We can have something on Web Store and leave it there, send it to eBay, or if you're using buy.com, or if you're using the Sears Marketplace, or any of these other multi-channel marketplaces, you can leverage your inventory advertise it in multiple marketplaces. When a sale happens anywhere, it automatically adjusts your inventory count in all other marketplaces. And so for us, when the sale happens, it's no longer available, so it pulls down our listings everywhere else. Um, there is a small risk for us that we're gonna oversell. If two people buy the same thing within you know, five minutes of each other, um, that's a small risk for us. But with a million SKUs that are all unique, that's a pretty small risk, and it's one that we're willing to deal with. Like I said, that means no more removing inventory from our website. Definitely helps our SEO. And again, no extra integrations. That work has already been done. Okay, order management. Um, as many orders as we're sending out on a weekly basis, you know, we wanted something that would plug right in. Obviously, with the integration being done through Channel Advisor, it was plug and play. Um, everything that we're already used to doing, it just shows up like an order from anywhere else. Uh, it's that easy. So Amazon does handle the payment processing, and depending on, on where you're at with that, that might be a really good thing. Um, one thing I will mention, I don't know if there's people that are like, super hardcore Google checkout type people or um, like really, really committed to PayPal, those aren't options with Amazon. Um, Amazon handles the payment processing and, and that's, that's it. Uh, the nice thing is, is that, that work is done. You don't have to get a merchant account. You don't have to get a gateway. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Amazon handles it and they do the fraud protection. Now, part of that fraud protection means that they hold a new order for about 90 minutes. So that's just a little FYI, if that's a big deal to you. Um, it wasn't to us. These, are, these turned out to be non-issues for us. Um, but in the interest of sort of full disclosure and letting you know what the realities of using this are, those are, those are a few things to consider. <clears throat> Talked a little bit about SEO. Um, again, there's no magic bullet here. Uh, where anyone's going to guarantee you that you're going to be on page one at the top of Google. 
Um, but the things that they have in place already are, are the helpful tools that we all use probably already. You can, you can edit the HTTP meta tags on every page. And some of you, just your eyes glazed over, and that's fine. So you're like, oh, cool. I love meta tags. <laughs> okay. um, the URLs that come up use natural language uh, that integrates your, your product titles. Um, so when it does come up in search results, you know, it's not in category equals 1653218. You know, and it doesn't make any sense. It actually shows what they're buying. It's very nice. Sitemaps are automatically submitted to Google and Bing, which covers a whole host of other people that sort of just <coughs> use those two engines. Uh, Google Webmaster Tools, already integrated in the back end, again, for those of you that, that really like that kind of stuff. They've got a social sh sharing widget. Um, you can just drag and drop onto all your pages. It makes it easy to generate buzz, uh, Facebook shares, Pinterest, you know, all that stuff. Design. Okay, so like I said, we're not a Marks and Spencer. I am the IT department. And so uh, we decided to do everything in house. And for us, design is important because our customers have a unique set of needs. You know, that they want to see what they're buying. And we want to be able to present it to them in a way that makes sense to them. And the nice thing about Web Store is that there's a range. If, if design is not huge for you, they've got templates that you can use. And if you don't know anything about HTML or CSS, you don't have to. You can click on, you know, upload your logo, change a few colors, and it'll be fine. Um, if you really like to tweak things and move things around, Len already showed us several examples of what people have been able to do, a lot of different um, looks and feels. Uh, and, and for us, that was important. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of templates. What I really appreciate is that we have full access to the CSS files and the JavaScript files. And so that makes it possible for us to customize to our heart's content. And, um, the design tools that they use, they have a, a preview feature where you can preview what the changes are that you've made before you actually publish it to the live site. And that's really helpful. For anyone that's ever done any sort of web design, it always looks different in the editor than it does on the live site. And so you've got to be able to see what that looks like prior to actually pushing it live. And side note, that also applies to the code upgrades that they push to you. You can apply it, preview it, if it breaks something, you can roll it back and figure out what it broke before it goes live. So that's really helpful. Lastly, I uh, just want to talk about some of the other features that, that come with this. Amazon Wishlist is built into this. And so for us, this is, again, really helpful because we get a lot of people that browse our site several times before they'll buy anything. Um, and, and typically, they'll get kind of sucked in because there's a lot of cool pictures to look at. And what this allows our customers to do is to say, wow, this is really cool, and they can just save it to their wish list. And if they come back two weeks later, uh, it's pretty hard to remember exactly what they were looking at when there's a million plus items on the website. And so if they've got a wish list set aside, it gives them the opportunity to revisit those specific items. They've also got a lot of what they call widgets uh, in, in the design that you can drag <coughs> off. Uh, merchandising tools like Recently Viewed, uh, most popular items. Merchandising tools that you're probably familiar with from Amazon.com that just plug right in to your own site and the data that, that comes in from sales. No extra programming, no extra integration from you. You just drag it and drop it, and it's there. Check out, you have options. Um, if you have a, a big time Amazon customer base already, you can just slide Amazon checkout right in there and it'll work. People can enter their credentials, it's one click, and they're done. Um, if branding is super important to you, you can have your own branded checkout that doesn't say anything about Amazon. Uh, or you can do what we've done and just offer both. And so that's nice flexibility. Promotions and coupons. Definitely a key piece uh, for most of our businesses. And again, this is one of those things that as I look at different shopping cart solutions, I'm sort of amazed at how limited some of the 
promotion modules are. Um, not so with Amazon Web Store. If you can dream up a promotion, Amazon has a way to implement that. Um, whether it's a, you know, buy five and get X percent off, or, you know, by category, by whatever you can dream up, they can support it. Google Analytics, wired in, most of us probably use that uh, and, and have to figure out. And again, with basic web stores, it was painful for a long time to, to get Google Analytics to work correctly with that. Uh, plugs right in. These last two we don't really use, but I know they're probably important for some of you out there. Ratings and reviews, customer reviews. Um, another way of just generating buzz and interaction. Um, nice thing about that is that it's moderated. So if someone is, is just spamming your site, uh, you have the ability to pull down that review. Um, but again, it's built right in. Uh, the ability to do bundles, variations, add accessory items, create those relationships that, that you're familiar with with the Channel Advisor, it all plugs right in. Uh, so for us, you know, all this stuff is, is all well and good. Um, the thing that we're the most excited about is to see the results of our transition. Uh, we started the transition, gosh, probably, I want to say September of last year, and we're able to launch right around January 1st. And so when we look at the fourth quarter of last year, which is traditionally the strongest quarter for us, versus the first quarter of this year of being on Amazon Web Store, our sales went up over 340% on our website. Just from functionality, people being able to find stuff, it being quick, available, um, smooth. <laughs> the difference was, was staggering to us that, oh, when your website works, people buy stuff. What, what a concept, right? <laughs> and so, um, it, this has been huge. And so we've been, we've been super happy with the implementation, how it's worked out, the results, and um, hope to continue using it for quite some time. So uh, that's all that I have. Um, we wanted to have a little bit of time. If you guys had any questions about any of the specifics um, for Len or for myself, 